Hello everyone. In this video we're going to cover water saturation interpretations. Dynomics has several options for determining water saturation, including the Archie, uh, Archie VT, Semen Dew and Modified Semen Dew, Indonesian, and Dual Water Methods. Alright, so let's get started. So last time uh, we had left off on our porosity interpretation, and it's important to note that because the saturation interpretation uh, is closely linked to porosity, it's important that you have uh, finalized your porosity interpretation before moving forward. Once you've done that, just come here to the uh, module selection menu and select the water saturation interpretations module. Uh, this will, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, this module has several uh, methods which are available to you. Uh, you can choose those on a zone by zone basis from the drop down menu. So, of course, we have the Archie and Archie VT methods, which are probably the most well established methods. Uh, they've been around uh, for over 50 years now. But we also have the modified Semen Dew, Semen Dew, and Indonesian methods, which take into account uh, clay resistivity, as well as the dual water method, which takes into account bound water resistivity. Okay, so in starting our interpretation, uh, the first thing to note about uh, saturation is that it is temperature dependent. So we're going to want to come in here and set our surface temperature as well as the geothermal gradient. And once you've done that, that allows the software to operate in the uh, downhole uh, temperature space. And uh, the first step really here is to set your RW from surface. Uh, ideally, you would know this from a produced water sample. Um, but if not, we can set it via the picket plot. Uh, if you're not familiar with the picket plot, it's a plot of total porosity versus resistivity. And the, uh, <clears throat> the idea behind it is you have lines of constant saturation, uh, which are shown here moving across the page and you want this 100% line to be on the left hand side of your data uh, trend and roughly sub parallel to your data and this uh, graph has lots of information in it it contains information about your uh, your uh, formation water resistivity your M value and your M value so the where your total porosity uh, intercepts this upper uh, limit that is your uh, RW uh, value. The slope of these lines is determined by the M value and the separation between the lines is determined by the N value. So with that said, let's go about setting some of our parameters. In this area, I happen to have a water analysis and I know that my RW at surface is around 0 0.08. And so as I do that, it shifts these lines to the left, uh, which leads to a corresponding increase in my saturation and then I want the slope of these lines to be roughly sub parallel to my data trend uh, but before I do that what I want to do is I want to filter my data a little bit so I want to eliminate uh, some of the high clay intervals so I'm going to say uh, at my V clay, clay curve to be less than 0 0.5 and I'm going to say that I want my uh, effective porosity be greater than about uh, three or four percent I'll put four in here and so this will clean up uh, some of the data here and so now we, we see that a value of M equals to two gives us a pretty good uh, you know evaluation we might want to decrease that just a little bit to, to better bracket the data and really for setting the N value um, you would really need to know what your um, what, what your electro electrical properties are from a core analysis. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to set that parameter. Um, so we're just going to leave that value as is. And this is what most interpreters would consider to be a very good fit for our picket plot. So in the dynamic software, uh, you know, we are setting this on our key well. However, uh, this is a property that can vary from area to area. And so Dynomics offers an option called Auto Interpret RW. And what Auto Interpret does is it allows us to uh, automatically interpret the RW in a similar manner uh, across all of our wells. And so what it does is it looks at 
where we set our, um, our RW relative to our RW apparent distribution. Uh, the only thing that we'll need to set in addition to that is to set our reservoir criteria here. And so I'm going to set our reservoir criteria to be our V clay uh, less than or equal to 50% uh, and our effective porosity greater than or equal to 3. And so now that I've done that, we now have a custom RW value for every well in our project. Okay, and in terms of uh, other uh, other options that you have in this, um, as I mentioned, we do have the uh, clay resistivity based modules, for example, like the semen uh, method. And so you'll need to set a clay resistivity for this. And we're going to turn off our filter here and we're we're going to look and we're going to say, oh, at our highest clay values, our resistivity is between three and four ohms. So we could come in here and we could set that value. And as we change that value, it will change our SW solution. Uh, we also have the option of using a dual water method. And if we're going to use dual water, we'll need to set an RWB uh, value. And with RWB, what we want to do is we want to try and use this RO overlay method once again to determine our uh, to determine our bound water resistivity. Um, so this can be quite difficult, uh, you know, and it's something that that is uh, a bit of a fudge factor in a lot of analyses. So um, I often caution people against using this unless they need to use this method to match results from core or production data. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to using our Archie VT, which is a simple yet robust method. Okay, so that is essentially it for interpreting our water saturation. We also do calculate a uh, bulk volume water. So if you want, you can look at that through a uh, buckles plot, for example, where we're looking at lines of constant BVW in a plot of VE versus SW. And so we can see how, how our data falls on this distribution. So that's it for our water saturation interpretation. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, remember to save your work before moving along.